Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What, uh, can't... Hi. Uh, hello. My name's Connor. Hello. Uh, Master of Knowledge. So this is a offshoot of Knowledgeia, right? So Preemptive Light, great channel. What if the Can... Kanzuk, uh, Cans UK Federation will unite today? Don't you mean, what if it... Anyways, my name's Connor. I like to uh, watch things and learn stuff. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord. Click on it, send it right over there, pull up a chair. Love to have you. How you guys doing? Good? Bad? Great? Good. Let's do it. Imagine if four of the world's most economically advanced countries forged an alliance, sharing the same language, culture, and values. It, would it should be Nick Hanzak. You, you should bring New England in. To boost trade and foreign policy between the countries and play a significant role in strengthening international security. Such a movement is gaining momentum. It is called Kanzuk. Kanzuk is a proposal to align Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK in an organization that would be the world's second biggest geopolitical union <clears throat> behind the EU. The idea of the three colonies linking with the UK was first conceived in 1967 by author William David McIntyre in his book Colonies into Commonwealth. However, the movement really started to gain steam in 2015, and Kanzuk was founded by British-born James Skinner. Since the UK decided to break away from the European Union in 2016, the Kanzuk proposal has started to attract significant support from economists, academics, and politicians from all four countries. <coughs> These features highlight Kanzuk's union. A population of over 136 million, the world's largest land mass of roughly 18 million yeah, square. Yeah, you have Canada and Australia, two like two of the top four largest countries, right? It's like Russia, Canada, US, or maybe top five. Is Brazil or Australia bigger? Excuse me? Okay. Yeah, kilometers, it would be huge. This would, subsequently, mean holding the world's largest supply of natural resources. GDP of $6.4 trillion, which would be the world's third largest, yeah, that's a high GDP the USA too. and China. Per per GDP per capita of $45,000, ranking up there with Hong Kong and Germany in the world's top 20. For perspective, USA GDP per capita is $65,000. Luxembourg tops world rankings at $114,000 per capita. Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the UK share more than the same language. All four countries share the Westminster parliamentary system and have Queen Elizabeth II as their head of state. They have the same democratic values that include freedom of speech, the same common law system, the same respect for democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. The four countries are also closely connected culturally. Citizens enjoy similar lifestyles, plus working and marriage visas are relatively straightforward to obtain. With the added advantage of English being the main language, it makes it easy for citizens to easily assimilate into each other's countries in the Quebec is so sad in the main language it makes it easy for citizens to easily assimilate into each other's countries in the case of work study and even retirement this would be a major benefit for those seeking employment opportunities and career advancement beyond their immediate surroundings for example a mining engineer in the UK might have limited job prospects at home but could readily find employment in one of the other three alliance nations. A school teacher from Canada might want to experience living overseas before she has a family and can smoothly transition to working in the New Zealand system. Students would also benefit from the arrangement, with high school graduates being able to choose from and apply to a wider range of tertiary institutions. A major advantage that Kanzuk offers is in the political. Uh, what are the top kind of colleges over in? Uh in New Zealand and Australia. Institutions. A major advantage that Kanzuk offers is if in the political knows. arena. All four nations and the United States comprise an international intelligence organization known as Five Eyes, F-V-E-Y. 
Panzuk can build on it, bringing even greater military, political, and economic cohesion. An alliance would bring considerable political power to the countries involved. Since the Second World War, all Kanzuk nations have, to some degree, been reliant on the United States for military support and protection. I feel like the only, the, 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 out of the, um, so I, I'm gonna like group uh, New Zealand and Australia together. Out of like New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and Great Britain, I would say Canada probably has the least to gain um, from the Union. Um, uh, obviously, the, uh, what uh, the UK has to gain is, you know, they recently came out of the EU, and so they're trying to find new trade deals, and so it'd be a, um, a good thing for them. Um, when it comes to, I think Australia and New Zealand might even have the most to gain out of, out of it, even more than Great Britain, because of uh, their isolation over on the other side of the world and proximity to China. And, uh, you know, they don't have, like, someone like the U.S. as, as a neighbor. Who, and so they're kind of, um, defense-wise, I think Australia and New Zealand would, would benefit most just because of, you know, China looming, looming over them. And then Canada, um, I mean, it doesn't exactly have to worry about security. It's, it's in, you know, it's above the U.S. Um, yeah, not to say they wouldn't benefit, but I think that's kind of how the... Years. The last decade has seen America become more withdrawn and reluctant in the protection of its allies, with a more internal focus becoming apparent. This is a major Holy issue for Kansas nations, as the current turbulent world climate demands a greater need for national security and strong relationships with cooperating allies. This has largely been brought about by the gradual unease felt at China's growing plans for expansion and influence throughout the world. Canada and Chinese relations have been strained since 2019, when, at the request of the United States, Canada arrested Huawei's employee, Meng Wanzhou. He was wanted on fraud charges, and China reacted strongly, promptly imposing trade limits on Canadian exports. Britain, too, has been threatened by Beijing, after China accused the UK of lending support to Hong Kong's push for democracy. China is New Zealand's largest trading partner, and New Zealand is obviously reluctant to ruffle too many feathers. China is so many countries' largest trading partner. They are such a, uh, they've kind of been all throughout history just such a self-reliant nation. And I feel like um, if any country in the world can survive in isolation, may maybe they can. I'm sure they lose a lot of money they gain. But I think also a good... Um, alliance or like maybe not like economic alliance but somewhat of a military alliance would be South Korea Japan maybe Taiwan maybe if you don't want to instigate something with China too quickly leave Taiwan out of it but South Korea Japan the Philippines and Vietnam maybe even Malaysia because I know all of them have uh, obviously you know Japan and South Korea have issues but uh, with China, but the Philippines I think Malaysia and uh, Vietnam have issues with China concerning water territory in the South China Sea. So, uh, and, and all of those players, I mean, the Philippines, um, maybe least of the four, but I mean, South Korea, giant economy, Japan, giant economy. Um, you have Vietnam, who has over 100 million people, I believe. And uh, you have the Philippines. And I think that could be a good kind of strategic alliance. I don't know whether militarily or economically or both. However, Australia has looked to New Zealand for support in growing tensions relating to trade barriers imposed by China. With a decreasing American presence in the South Pacific, Kanzuk countries can gain great military interdependence as a collective, much more than they can do on their own. Canada failed to gain a seat at the United Nations, Australia is embroiled in trade bans with China, and the UK is still recovering from its exit from the EU. Politically, Kanzuk has much to offer. Advocates of Kanzuk are adamant that there are also considerable economic advantages in forming an alliance. Such a union would function much like the European Union, however without much of the restrictions of the EU's regulatory central government. The European Union saw the combined growth of member countries' GDP grow by almost 9%. With fewer barriers, the Kanzuk alliance could bring similar if not greater levels of economic growth. Citizens will be free to travel, live, work, and invest as they like within the member countries. 
Crucially, the Retire. merger of the Kanzuk countries can potentially give them greater reign to push for free trade in the Asian region. As countries look to lessen their economic dependence on China, free trade agreements with other nations is becoming a more sought-after goal. Markets in India, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia and Taiwan could be targeted as viable options of free trade for Kanzuk countries. Critics of Kanzuk claim the EU remains the UK's largest trading region and Britain would be best served by focusing on neighboring countries for future growth. However, why can't it do both? Kanzuk supporters point to East Asian nations such as Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and China as examples of countries that have built strong economies despite considerable distances with their trading partners. More world so, now. what do people think? Polls have shown an overwhelming support for the Kanzuk Alliance. The Covid pandemic and a growing instability in global politics has only increased enthusiasm for the Kanzuk proposal. Approval ratings are hard to ignore. Of the people interviewed, 73% of Australians, 76% of Canadians, 84% of New Zealanders and 68% of British agreed Kanzuk was a good option for the future. Significantly, elected leaders from each country have also thrown their support behind the initiative. Current Prime Ministers Justin Trudeau, Canada, Jacinda Ardern, New Zealand, Scott Morrison, Australia and Boris Johnson, UK have all endorsed the alliance. Why don't you call it like the Anglo Union or something like that? It sounds a little bit cooler, better than Anza. He's hoped that US President Joe Biden will likely give his blessing to such a union as he seeks to strengthen ties amongst English allied union. nations and liberal democracies. A Sorry, I gotta shut up. But... US President Joe Biden will likely give his blessing to such a union as he seeks to strengthen ties amongst allied nations and liberal democracies. A Kanzuk spokesperson reasoned that the proposed bloc would allow the creation of a third pillar of Western power alongside the US and the EU. China's growing aggression and militarism in South Asia and its trade monopoly could be restrained if powerful democracies are united in their foreign and economic policies. There would be consensus on international issues relating to freedom for Hong Kong, independence for Taiwan and the fight against economic espionage. To the critics, Kanzuk is simply an overly ambitious dream that has too many barriers. However, many disagree. The economic and political benefits make a very compelling case. Most importantly, people are keen. Kanzuk advocates are convinced it not only could happen, but should happen. Good points. Great channel. Um, again, I think they're uh, connect to Nalegio, which is awesome. Yeah, cool. Make it happen. Let us let us in. I think it's a really good idea. I think it it benefit it would benefit all sides, a few more than others. Um, yeah, and especially with the stuff in Russia, you know, Russia's economy being pretty much destroyed as they go through Ukraine. Um, China has less and less kind of powerful allies, and uh, that's definitely a big reason, especially for for uh, New Zealand and Australia. Cool video. See you guys next time. Hope you're all doing well. Chin up.